Chapter 1. The Basic Rules Investing in real estate is all about putting your money to work now and making it grow so that you will have more money in the future. Your goal is to make enough profit or return to cover the risk you undertake, the bills you pay, and the expenses of owning real estate investment, for instance utilities and insurance. At the end of the day, once you get a good grasp of the industry, real estate investing can be as reasonably basic as playing a game of monopoly. The game entails purchasing properties, avoiding bankruptcy, and generating cash releases so you can invest in more properties along the way. The concept is simple, or at least appears that way. Indeed, the real estate business allows for some room for error. However, if you risk, miscalculate too much, or succumb to fatal errors, you could end up broke, and then it's game over. That's why you need to familiarize yourself with the rules well before you begin rolling the dice for the first time. The logic behind real estate investment has not changed much over the years. The governing principle is to buy low, hold the property for some time, and then sell high. While you own a property, you should make improvements which will help increase its value and pay your taxes on your profits. Even if you don't have the money to seal your first deal, you can still play the game. Simply use other people's money to finance your investment. Live in the real estate, keep your property, and increase equity. With each passing year, you claim a bigger portion of your mortgaged property. Over time, your share of the property will increase, whereas that of the bank will gradually decrease. That's the way investors have been playing the game for decades. Until now, at least. New approaches to real estate investment have settled into a new playing style, flipping. In a nutshell, flipping means waiting a lot less before selling the properties you buy to someone else. This quickens the pace of the game, and, because of that, impacts a number of other variables as well. Still, the game remains the same. Is property always best? The investment market shows that, in terms of financial success, in the last decade, the balance has been tilting towards property as opposed to any other type of savings or investment. However, this does not render property investments as the ultimate winning ticket. Market trends are a combination between speculative frenzy and reasoned fundamental investment planning and risk-to-benefits assessment, which makes it difficult to draw a clear distinction between stocks or real estate when it comes to profits. Investors don't always make more money with property than they do with stocks, and it's all a matter of investment and market analysis to find the best opportunities at the right time. Speaking of opportunities, however, if we approach investments from the angle of their current possibilities and probabilities, investing in real estate does score the best record. Given today's bargain property costs in respect to where property values will probably stand in 5 to 10 years from now, given the benefits in terms of property wealth, equity, without big gains in price, given the relative income yields of property as opposed to stocks or securities, given the tax benefits of property versus all other investments, given the manifold sources of returns for that property, and last, given the entrepreneurial skill that you can apply to property to boost its value and cash flows, real estate is the undisputed winner. If so, why? Welcome to the enticing world of real estate, where average players and seasoned investors alike create values every day, be it intentionally or unexpectedly. Some financial specialists are sharp to such a degree as to foresee patterns and changes in property characteristics that can prompt value creation and profit from compelling investment plans. Other speculators capitalize on their investments every now and then, only to lose some, or all, of their profits because they base their decisions more on instinct rather than research and knowledge. Still other market players, perhaps the majority, completely ignore the property business rather inclining toward the stock or security markets, mutual funds, or other non-land ventures. The present article sets out to demystify the real estate investment process to provide a fundamental understanding of how values are made and to develop the skill set needed to become an effective real estate investor. The instructions are basic and apply to most investors, whether institutional, corporate, or individuals and whether they're undertaking the entire investment risk themselves or acting as consultants to those who may be. When you rely too much on stocks, bonds, or social security, you leave out many variables at the mercy of chance. 
aside from purchasing, selling, or maybe voting for social security increases, there's virtually nothing you can do to impact the profits you might expect to gain from these assets. Things are completely different with profits. When you rely on properties to generate wealth and sustainable income, you can achieve sizable returns, even in times of recession. Or, perhaps, as some experts point out, especially in times of recession, since that is when a large number of bargain-priced estates become available. Moreover, channeling resources into property opens up benefit opportunities that stock or bond investors never get access to. Buy properties at sensibly lower costs than their actual market value. By putting creative finance to good use, get properties with as little of your own money as possible. Improve properties to increase their current market value. Readjust your market strategy to raise rents and lower vacancies. Reduce operating costs to boost net operating income. Sell and trade up your current properties without having to pay tax on your capital gains. Converting a less profitable property to one that's more profitable, flats to condominiums, residential to office. And haul out tax-free money by refinancing your properties. You can borrow short-term versus a stock portfolio. However, margin requirements, value unpredictability, and cash scarcity will overburden that option with expenses and risks. Chapter 2. Approaches to Real Estate Investment You can approach investing in your first real estate from a number of different angles. Here are some of the major money-making routes. 1. Real Estate Appreciation this is where the property gains value owing to a change in the real estate market, the area around your property getting scarcer or busier, for example a prominent commercial center moving into the vicinity, or any makeovers you bring to your real estate investment to attract potential purchasers or leaseholders. Take note though that real estate appreciation is a slippery game, far riskier than investing for cash flow income. Most aspiring real estate investors fail to draw a clear distinction between price gains resulting from appreciation and those resulting from inflation. Appreciation takes place when demand grows at a pace that exceeds that of supply for a specific type of property and or location. Inflation, on the other hand, is a factor that drives prices up regardless of the demand-supply ratio. The question that arises is, should you always channel your money into properties that are located in areas positioned for above-average appreciation? The answer, again, depends on the scenario. For instance, some investors own rental properties in depreciating areas where others have generated millions of dollars net worth from similar investments. The important lesson here is to depart from the false belief that you cannot turn out good profits unless the corresponding market price appreciates. 2. Cash flow income This sort of property investment concentrates on purchasing a land property, for example a loft building, and managing it so you gather a steady flow of money from rent, namely the cash a tenant pays you to use your property for a set period. You can create cash flow income from well-run storage units, auto washes, loft buildings, office buildings, rental houses, and so on. Unlike with a vast majority of stocks, income property regularly produces cash flows of 5 to around 10%. If you possess a $2 million property free of financing, you can cash in on $100,000 to $200,000 a year. If you claimed a $2 million portfolio of stocks, you may expect pocketing cash flows in the form of dividend payments of thirty dollars to maybe $60,000 a year. Generally, the biggest well stream of return for unleveraged properties has originated from cash flow. If you wanted to develop a passive, inflation-secure stream of income, then your goal would be to own income properties. Just like expenses, cash flows increase or decrease in relation with your rents. Another opportunity to build cash flows is to refinance or reduce your annual mortgage installments. 3. Real estate related income. This refers to the income professionals produce in the real estate business, for instance, brokers, who profit through commissions from purchasing and selling property, or real estate management organizations who sees a percentage of rents in return for running the daily operations of a property. For instance, a lodging administration organization retains 10% of an inn's sales for dealing with the everyday operations. These may include enlisting housekeepers, running the front desk, 
gardening work, and laundry. 4. Ancillary real estate investment income. In the right circumstances, this can become a substantial source of profit. Auxiliary real estate investment income can come from vending machines in public buildings or laundromats for low-rent condominiums. As a result, they serve as smaller than normal organizations inside an ampler property investment, allowing you to profit from a small but stable or renewable clientele. There are a number of different ancillary fees accessible to a manager to augment compensation, each depending on the specific investment strategy. Here is a brief description of some of the most important ancillary fees. Acquisition fee. This fee compensates the administrator for the expenses underlying the acquisition of a project. Generally, this charge is a set percentage or a sliding scale of percentages assigned to gross asset value or investment equity. At times, managers may choose to abandon this fee and charge the joint venture for acquisition costs directly. Disposition fee. This fee can be claimed when disposing of, or discarding, an investment. It mostly springs up when no external brokers are involved, although sometimes a small charge may be claimed even when an intermediary is employed. Typically, it represents a percentage applied to the sales price. When an external broker is present, the cost of their services may be deducted from the fee because of the operating partner. Financing Refinancing Fee a manager may claim this fee for sourcing and securing financing for tasks or projects. This is generally the case when there is no involvement from external mortgage brokers, though occasionally the manager may claim a small charge regardless of whether they employ the services of a broker. It generally represents a percentage applied to the amount of the financing secured. When an external broker is present, the cost of their services may be deducted from the fee due to the manager. Development Fee Typically applicable to development projects, this fee compensates the administrator for managing the development process. Generally, it amounts to a set percentage assigned to project costs, occasionally expressed as the lesser of planned or actual costs, although determining the costs subjected to this calculation allows room for negotiation. For instance, land value and development financing expenses may be exempted from this fee. Construction Management Fee this fee, which reimburses the manager for overseeing the construction process, could apply to both new development and or restoration redevelopment plans. It generally represents a set percentage applied either to project hard costs or to soft costs. Similarly, this fee is sometimes expressed as the lesser of planned or actual costs. Debt and Leverage To take ownership of a property, you can use the element of debt by taking a home loan out against the property. Leverage draws in many real estate investors, since it gives you the chance to obtain properties that are out of your initial price range. On the downside though, in a failing market, this practice entails the risk of going bankrupt if you miscalculate your interest expense and regular payment obligations. Buying real estate properties in your own name renders you even more exposed to that risk. This is why, for risk management reasons, it is advisable to consider holding real estate investments through special types of legal entities, called limited liability companies or limited partnerships. To sort out the specific legal matters on a property deal, and to select the ownership method that is best for you, always seek the advice of a qualified lawyer. In doing so, you can protect your personal assets should the investment be driven into insolvency or something else goes wrong. In such cases, you can limit the risk you undertake to that of losing the money you have invested. Any other collateral should be safe. Real Estate Options Types of Properties When you are ready to start the process of real estate investing, you will want to decide which of the real estate investment types is most appropriate for you. In fact, real estate describes a collection of different subsets that resemble each other in the sense that they are typically attached to land. However, these subsets are quite distinctive in characters, sources of demand, and investment opportunity. Number 1. Vacant Land Ranch and farm specialists have been reaping considerable benefits in this business for quite a while. Largely, the property size and cost is substantial, along with their specific underlying commissions. Before you begin to explore these types of real estate investments, 
make sure you get a basic grasp of the respective purchasing requirements and motivations of your prospect. In booming areas, agents can profit substantially by specializing in building lots for properties. However, make sure you take into account the factor of distance, which can lead to a number of other issues. As the spread continues, the area you have to cover will also get farther out from the city. Number 2. Residential Properties Residential or private properties are the first option with both starting and seasoned real estate investors. That comes as no surprise, considering the huge number of existing lodging units nationwide. Real estate investors gradually tend to become specialized in different types of homes, including condos, separate homes, duplexes, vacation houses, and so on. The market abounds in each of these. Number 3. Commercial Properties Commercial property is a term that designates both empty land, land or buildings selected for commercial use, and existing business building or buildings. Commercial property valuation entails measuring an array of different factors, which can stretch out from current value to past revenue, income potential and cash flow after deducting owner benefits. A solid piece of advice is to approach this niche diligently and wisely, since it takes extensive investment experience to achieve success with real estates here. Ideally, try to build your way up to it gradually by transitioning from land and private property markets as you become familiar with the essentials of the business. Chapter 3. Real Estate Investment Timing Is now the right time to sell? The recent years have been great for real estate investment. A vast majority of real estates all across the U.S. have most likely gained in value. On a national scale, as pointed out by the FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, home costs have raised about 50% on average. The favorable market climate of late prompts the question, how long can things carry on like this? The next logical question is, what can you do if a crash is brewing? The best advice for the aspiring investor is that you can never go wrong taking a profit. Should things spiral out of control, all you risk is to end up foregoing further profits that you might have gained if you had stayed in the business. Naturally, most property holders and real estate investors might want to secure their benefits. One may be tempted to sell. So, should you do the same? The answer to that is case-dependent. Selling Strategies for the Real Estate Investor With prices on the rise, venture properties moving at a picked-up pace, and private properties becoming progressively hard to oversee, the logical question is, should you sell? The same low interest rates that have sustained the upsurge in single-family homes have been both a blessing and a curse to property investors. This mixed result has led to increases in real estates, yet the latter has also brought about an increase in the number of vacancies, as their tenants become home owners. Due to looser credit requirements and increasing credit availability, the real estate business has flourished rapidly. The difficulty of managing such properties is often reason enough to compel investors to sell. However, at present, the allurement of profit-taking makes it hard for investors to decide upon that. The temptation is similar for investors as it is for home owners. Should you sell now, wait for the next market crash, and then seize on bargain deals? Again, it depends. In any market circumstance, the investor selling and buying back faces some of the same drawbacks as the sell-rent-buy mortgage holder. The financial specialist will encounter the same transactions costs as the property holder, acquiring a land commission, title insurance premium, mortgage initiation costs, as well as transfer fees. Luckily, the real estate investor can circumvent the expense and bother of moving, but at the cost of other greater hassles. The investor has to deal both with the effects of capital gains taxes and devaluation recapture. Capital gains taxes are pretty much self-explanatory. A capital gain mirrors the current higher value relative to the earlier acquisition fees. Nevertheless, determining the gain is much more complicated when it comes to land investments. As an added benefit, the process of depreciation favors investment in real estate. While the property may be gaining in value, the law permits the landowner to record the estimation of the property on an annual basis by taking the proper deterioration deduction. This favorable situation may secure only a small fraction of the income from the property, 
However, it is one of the rewards that real estate investors enjoy until the day they sell. At that point, tax officers will come knocking on the door to claim their share. The formula used to determine capital gains attached to real estate doesn't account for the initial acquisition cost. It relies on the original cost plus any capital improvements minus depreciation. The figure produced represents the adjusted basis. Capital enhancements extend to any sort of improvements, for instance new roofing, heating installation, or wall renovation work. Therefore, the equation that helps to determine the capital gain will be the adjusted basis deducted from the net sale proceeds. We won't delve deeper into these matters, but the math provided here will help to clarify how the selling process works. Is now the right time to buy? There are different scenarios when an individual or family may consider purchasing a home. We have first-time buyers, growing families wanting to move into bigger homes, there are empty nesters wanting to trade down, and then there are the families contemplating the acquisition of a country estate or townhouse. Whether any of these people should be considering a home purchase in the first place depends on determining whether the prospective buyer would be buying in a highly unstable market context. Either way, the prospective home purchaser is the one who decides about the stability of the market. If the market conditions announce a downturn, then only the empty nester considering downsizing would benefit from the circumstances. All others should wait patiently for a financial upturn. Notwithstanding, to be practical, it is hard to anticipate precisely when the market will collapse. It is unlikely that value depreciation will plague all sectors of the financial market simultaneously. Moreover, some of the slumping areas might not be on any list at all. Since major downfalls in local financial activity are typically the main indicators of the market, any forecasts can be unreliable. The conclusion that can be drawn here is that anybody seeking to purchase any real estate in large segments of the country will need to react only when the evidence is based on multiple signs of decline. The best solution for the home buyer or the land speculator is to revert to value investing. Identifying and seizing value investing in any market. Investment decisions should never be based solely on media hype and speculation. Moreover, the goal is to draw up a strategy that will help you negotiate your way out of any kind of market threats. And value investing stands out as one of the best strategies you can rely on. Real estate markets have been prospering long enough to trick investors and homeowners into making careless decisions. The last few years have been great for real estate, regardless of property types. The plan has been to pay any price to buy anything, stand by, sell, and then reap the benefits on the investment. Historically, though, real estate markets have not always been so lenient with investors. The term value investing is self-explanatory. It means snatching a good deal on any real estate you buy. It means purchasing wholesale rather than retail respectively purchasing below current or potential fair market value. Clearly, value investing is a sound strategy in virtually every scenario. And its potential for profit especially shows up in the context of a recession. That's when the players either score big or sink to the bottom. The top skills behind value investing are patience and discipline in making purchase decisions. For instance, rather than buy and sell a quick makeover home at a steep discount, Consider buying homes that show real potential in terms of restoration and upgrade. Homes in move-in condition will always move quicker on the market than homes requiring repair. There are many reasons for that. First-time homeowners may be struggling to pay down the upfront instalment as it is, not to mention the costs of any immediate repairs. When it comes to value investing, most home buyers act more like consumers than investors do. Typically, there is no fault in making consumer-driven decisions. Obviously, anyone looking for a house who is concerned with discovering one near their workplace with a specific set of amenities and requirements in terms of room sizes might likewise want to get a decent deal. Yet that arrangement is less important compared to getting the right house, the right set of consumer-driven profits. In this context, the house is perceived as a place to live that also happens to act as a powerful investment. For value investors, it is the other way around. A home serves primarily as a crucial investment that happens to be a place to live at the same time. 
The value investor who purchases 10% to 20% below current equitable worth holds an advantageous position to negotiate a downturn of the market or to benefit from continual appreciation. Before probing deeper into the methodology for uncovering such deals, anyone considering any real estate acquisition should have a firm grasp of the essentials of real estate value assessment. Chapter 4. Types of Real Estate Investment Risks What are the distinguishing characteristics of real estate investment that render it as riskier than putting resources into government securities? On the same page, what are the risk characteristics that separate real estate investment from alternatives like basic stock, corporate bonds, and city bonds? To find the answer to that, we must identify and examine the source of risk differences among different classes of investment. Here is a short overview of major investment risk characteristics you should consider when deciding a route for your investment money. Business Risk The focal point of real estate financial investors is leveraging the business of renting space. Therefore, they expose themselves to the business risk of loss caused by variances in monetary movement that influence the fluctuation of income produced by the properties they own. Economic shifts typically impact properties differently, depending on their respective type, size, location, and pending leases. There is great contrast between the rate of growth of different districts, cities, and even neighborhoods, brought about by changes in demand, population changes, etc. Naturally, real estate properties that are influenced to a larger degree than others are labeled as riskier. By contrast, properties with a better diversified tenant mix are less exposed to business risk. Likewise, properties with leases that grant the holder protection against startling surges in costs come with the least business risk. Financial risk. Debt financing or financial leverage increases the business risk. Financial risk increases in direct proportion with the amount of debt on a real estate investment. The level of financial risk is additionally dependent upon the cost and structure of the debt. For instance, a loan granting the lender a participation in any appreciation in the value of the real estate in return for lower regularly scheduled installments may entail less financial risk. Liquidity risk. This risk emerges when an otherwise highly active market suddenly becomes unavailable. The harder it is to liquidate an investment, the higher the risk that a price concession may have to be granted to a purchaser in case the seller is forced to sell the investment quickly. Overall, real estate entails a relatively high level of liquidity risk. The typical period for selling real estate income properties is between 12 to 18 months, even more so when there is weak demand for investment real estate. Special purpose properties come with a significantly higher liquidity risk as opposed to properties that can be adjusted to accommodate alternative purposes. Inflation risk. Sudden inflation surges can diminish a financial specialist's rate of return if the income attached to the investment does not grow sufficiently as to balance out the effect of inflation, consequently compromising the real value of the investment. The effects of inflation on real estates are twofold. Some investments may benefit from it, while others may suffer. In spite of the ubiquitous inflation risk, the real estate business has generally done well in times of inflation. This may partly be credited to the use of leases and to the fact that the replacement cost of real estate has a tendency to grow with inflation. Amid times of high vacancy rates, though, when the demand for space drops and new construction is unfeasible, the income deriving from real estate does not have a tendency to increase with sudden bouts of inflation. Management Risk to preserve the value of the investment, most real estate investments rely on management prowess to keep the space leased and well maintained. The rate of return that the speculator gets is at the management team, in other words, is liable to management risk. Depending on their type and size, some properties ask for a higher level of management ability than others do. Interest rate risk Any fluctuations in interest rates will impact the price of all securities and investments. Based on the relative maturity of investments, though, some venture costs will react more than others will, accordingly expanding the potential for loss or gain, in other words, the interest rate risk. 
Real estate is generally highly leveraged, which means interest rates can greatly affect the rate of return earned by equity investors. Regardless of whether a current investor has a fixed rate mortgage or no mortgage, any increases in interest rates may sink the price that a subsequent purchaser is willing to pay. Legislative risk There are numerous regulations governing the real estate business, including tax laws, rent control, zoning, as well as other statutory restrictions. Legislative risk emerges from the changes in regulations, which can at times hinder the profitability of the investment. Of course, state and local government-imposed legislation can be looser or stricter, depending on various factors. Environmental risk Environmental changes or sudden environmental risks often affect the value of real estate investments. Contamination, or the prospects of contamination by toxic waste spillage, for instance, may render a property unusable, whether temporarily or permanently. As opposed to the risks described above, environmental risk is more difficult to translate into figures, although it generally tends to cause more loss than the other mentioned risks. Sometimes, the cleanup costs alone might exceed the value of a property. And sell high. While you own a property, you should make improvements which will help increase its value and pay your taxes on your profits. Even if you don't have the money to seal your first deal, you can still play the game. Simply use other people's money to finance your investment. Live in the real estate, keep your property, and increase equity. With each passing year, you claim a bigger portion of your mortgaged property. Over time, your share of the property will increase, whereas that of the bank will gradually decrease. That's the way investors have been playing the game for decades. Until now, at least. New approaches to real estate investment have settled into a new playing style, flipping. In a nutshell, flipping means waiting a lot less before selling the properties you buy to someone else. This quickens the pace of the game, and, because of that, impacts a number of other variables as well. Still, the game remains the same. Is property always best? The investment market shows that, in terms of financial success, in the last decade, the balance has been tilting towards property as opposed to any other type of savings or investment. However, either undertaking the entire investment risk themselves, or acting as consultants to those who may be. When you rely too much on stocks, bonds, or social security, you leave out many variables at the mercy of chance. Aside from purchasing, selling, or maybe voting for social security increases, there's virtually nothing you can do to impact the profits you might expect to gain from these assets. Things are completely different with profits. When you rely on properties to generate wealth and sustainable income, you can achieve sizable returns, even in times of recession. Or, perhaps, as some experts point out, especially in times of recession, since that is when a large number of bargain-priced estates become available. Moreover, channeling resources into property opens up benefit opportunities that stock or bond investors never get access to. Buy properties at sensibly lower costs than their actual market value, by putting creative finance to good use, get properties with as little of your own money as possible. Improve properties to increase their current market value. Readjust your market strategy to raise rents and lower vacancies. The state is the undisputed winner. If so, why? Welcome to the enticing world of real estate, where average players and seasoned investors alike create values every day, be it intentionally or unexpectedly. Some financial specialists are sharp to such a degree as to foresee patterns and changes in property characteristics that can prompt value creation and profit from compelling investment plans. Other speculators capitalize on their investments every now and then, only to lose some, or all, of their profits because they base their decisions more on instinct rather than research and knowledge. Still other market players, perhaps the majority, completely ignore the property business rather inclining toward the stock or security markets, mutual funds, or other non-land ventures. The present article sets out to demystify the real estate investment process to provide a fundamental understanding of how values are made and to develop the skill set needed to become an effective real estate investor. The instructions are basic and apply to most investors, whether institutional, corporate, or individuals. 
and whether this does not render property investments as the ultimate winning ticket. Market trends are a combination between speculative frenzy and reasoned fundamental investment planning and risk-to-benefits assessment, which makes it difficult to draw a clear distinction between stocks or real estate when it comes to profits. Investors don't always make more money with property than they do with stocks, and it's all a matter of investment and market analysis to find the best opportunities at the right time. Speaking of opportunities, however, if we approach investments from the angle of their current possibilities and probabilities, investing in real estate does score the best record. Given today's bargain property costs in respect to where property values will probably stand in five to ten years from now, given the benefits in terms of property wealth, equity, without big gains in price, given the relative income yields of property as opposed to stocks or securities, given the tax benefits of property versus all other investments, given the manifold sources of returns for that property, and last, given the entrepreneurial skill that you can apply to property to boost its value and cash flows, real Chapter 1. The Basic Rules Investing in real estate is all about putting your money to work now and making it grow so that you will have more money in the future. Your goal is to make enough profit or return to cover the risk you undertake, the bills you pay, and the expenses of owning real estate investment, for instance, utilities and insurance. At the end of the day, once you get a good grasp of the industry, real estate investing can be as reasonably basic as playing a game of monopoly. The game entails purchasing properties, avoiding bankruptcy, and generating cash releases so you can invest in more properties along the way. The concept is simple, or at least appears that way. Indeed, the real estate business allows for some room for error. However, if you risk, miscalculate too much, or succumb to fatal errors, you could end up broke, and then it's game over. That's why you need to familiarize yourself with the rules well before you begin rolling the dice for the first time. The logic behind real estate investment has not changed much over the years. The governing principle is to buy low, hold the property for some time, and then